Nearly 100 Ukrainian prisoners of war returned from Russian captivity. <laughs> Russia confirmed it used a high-explosive three-ton glide bomb against Ukraine. Ten years after MH17 downing, the EU has once again called on Russia to recognize its responsibility for the tragedy. We cannot accept as a final truth what they say. Hi, I'm Iva Kucherenko and this is United24 Media. According to public broadcaster Suspilne, Ukrainian security service drones targeted a Russian Coast Guard base on Donoslav Lake in the temporarily occupied Crimea. As a result of a combined attack by sea and air drones, the headquarters, which has a command center, an ammunition and equipment depot, a power substation, technical facilities and firing positions were damaged and put out of action. Ukraine sees the return of 95 prisoners of war from Russian captivity. Among them are soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine, the National Guard and Border Guards. The exchange was facilitated with the mediation of the United Arab Emirates. This is the 54th exchange of prisoners since the beginning of the full-scale invasion. In total, the coordination headquarters for the treatment of prisoners of war has managed to return 3,405 people from Russian captivity. I've arrived in the Belgorod region. This is the Sumy region. I'm in the Sumy region. I have to go to the hospital for a checkup. I have severe problems with my stomach. I was hit in the ribs. I can't breathe normally. Then they'll give me a phone and I'll call you straight away. The European Union has once again called on Russia to recognize its responsibility for the downing of a civilian Malaysian flight MH17. The statement was made by the EU High Representative on behalf of all 27 EU member states a day before the 10th anniversary of the tragedy. On July 17, 2014, the civilian flight was downed over the temporarily occupied territory of Ukraine. All the 298 people on board were killed. The joint investigation team found evidence that it was hit by a Buk surface-to-air missile system belonging to the armed forces of the Russian Federation. Despite the results of the investigation, Russia continues to deny all accusations. Rebels reported that they managed to shoot down another Ukrainian Air Force transport plane. This happened over the town of Torres in the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic. July 17, 2014. Russian propagandists were the first to report the downing of the plane in the skies over eastern Ukraine. However, their rhetoric changed within the hour. It was not a Ukrainian military plane that was shot down by Russia-supported militants on the occupied Ukrainian territories, but a passenger one. There were 298 people on board, 80 of whom were children. No one survived. The joint investigation team, consisting of representatives from Australia, Belgium, Malaysia, the Netherlands, and Ukraine, began to investigate the crash. They, like the independent Bellingcat investigators, came to a clear conclusion. Today, the JIT concluded that the BUK missile launcher that was used to shoot down MH17 originated from the 53rd Anti-Aircraft Missile Brigade of the Russian Armed Forces. The Buk system was delivered to Ukraine from the Russian city of Kursk, and then, after the strike, it was returned to Russia. But that's how Moscow, which claimed after the tragedy that an investigation was needed, is responding to all the results. Here's the fragment of the BBC program with the spokesperson of the Russian president. With respect, we, the, prosecu the prosecuting team, any the prosecuting proof. team has gathered evidence for many, many months. This happened more than two years ago. It has been an exhaustive investigation. They went to Moscow, they asked for help from you. Your different agencies, they say, did not fully cooperate, but they have come up with these conclusions. You can call them preliminary if you like, but are you denying the truth of what they say? Well, first of all, uh, we cannot accept as a final truth what they say. And that's how the Russian policy in this theme was built. Anyway, five years after the catastrophe, the International Joint Investigation Team named four suspects who were believed to have been involved in the transportation and combat use of the book system. In November 2022, the District Court of The Hague sentenced three of them to life imprisonment. It feels good right now. Uh, this is uh, part of justice for us. It's not the whole thing yet, but it's a good start. However, the decision was made in absentia. Russia did not agree to extradition. 
Russia has never tried to avoid any responsibility if it had that responsibility on its shoulder. Those facts that we were presented as evidence of our guilt do not satisfy us. There's not any proof there. Among the convicts is Igor Girkin, also known as Igor Strelkov, the self-proclaimed Minister of Defense of the puppet DPR. By the way, he is currently behind bars in Russia. However, he was sent to the colony not because of the downing of the Boeing, but for messages on his Telegram channel that the Russian authorities recognized as extremist. But there's one more person who approved the use in Ukraine of a Russian missile system that shot down the plane. At least international prosecutors said they had found strong indications of such actions from the side of that man. And his name is Vladimir Putin. Uh, we do have strong indications about his decision making, uh, but we do not reach the high bar. Uh, and beside that, because at this moment, uh, Putin is still head of state, he is head of state, he has an immunity. So only um, after there, he is not a head of state, we can look into what's next. However, they said evidence of Putin's and other Russian officials' involvement was not concrete enough to lead to a criminal conviction and that they would end their probe without further prosecutions. We've reached our limits. We've done everything that we can within our limits, and the next answers, they lay in Russia. And as long as there's no cooperation in Russia, those answers will remain there. Even after 10 years, the wounds from this disaster have not yet healed, said the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte, visiting Kharkiv in March. But new crimes by Russians have been added. Russia confirmed its use of a high-explosive three-ton glide bomb Fab 3000 against Ukraine. The Russian Ministry of Defense released a video of a Russian Su-34 fighter jet launching the bomb, as they said, on the temporary deployment point of the Ukrainian armed forces. According to Russia, this was the first instance where such a bomb was used. However, a month earlier, on the 20th of June, Russian Telegram channels shared a video showing a strike on Lipsy in the Kharkiv region using a Fab 3000. According to the Ukrainian media, Defense Express, Russians intended to target the Lipsy hospital. Russian forces hit a residential building in Mirnograd, Donetsk region, killing three civilians and leaving another seven injured, as reported by the State Emergency Service of Ukraine. Russian forces attacked the town using two guided aerial bombs on Sunday. The entrance to the five-floor residential building was completely destroyed. A public transport stop and an administrative building were also under attack. Debris from the bomb hit a bus which was carrying workers. Three people were killed. It was a regular bus that was taking mine workers home after their shift. Most of the debris hit the bus while people were on board. We can see the force of the impact. The debris has damaged this bus through and through. Our neighbor was sitting by their window and the explosion was so forceful that he was knocked over. The children were at home and scared. We live on the other side. Our windows were blown out. President Volodymyr Zelensky has stated that 25 Patriot air defense systems are needed to completely shield Ukraine's skies from Russian aerial assaults. However, during his press conference, he noted that to protect the skies, more than just Patriot systems would be required. It's not the only system that we need, it's complex. A Patriot cannot work on its own, but the Patriot is the most crucial because it deals with ballistic threats. I cannot say how many we already have, but I can say that to completely cover the skies over Ukraine, according to our military personnel, we need 25 Patriot systems. Zelensky also anticipates hosting a second peace summit in November and expects Russia to participate. He mentioned that in July or early August, the security advisors will meet to discuss the outcomes that arose from the initial summit on peace for Ukraine. The inaugural meeting will likely take place in Qatar and will focus on energy security. In August, there will be a meeting in Turkey addressing freedom of navigation and food security issues, while September will see talks in Canada focusing on humanitarian matters. After these three points, if they prove successful, we will have a fully prepared plan for their implementation. I have set the goal for us to have a fully prepared plan by November, hence the summit then, most likely. 
Since the start of the full-scale invasion, over 1,000 civilians have been injured by Russian explosive devices with nearly 300 killed, as reported by the Security Service of Ukraine. Most of these incidents happened in the Donetsk and Kharkiv regions. Investigators are now building a case to show that Russia deliberately uses anti-personnel mines against Ukrainian civilians. Once sufficient evidence has been collected, it will be sent to the International Criminal Court in The Hague. As the investigation revealed, the Russian troops are deliberately setting up booby traps near or on the territory of settlements in the combat zone. The occupiers use various consumer items, including children's toys and boxes of candy, to disguise the munitions. In addition, Russian subversive forces often set up minefields to cover their retreat from the frontline areas and the border of Ukraine. Russia has lost at least 100 of its modern T-90M tanks, as reported by the Oryx portal, who analyzed publicly available photos and videos. These are the same tanks that Russian propaganda promote as their modernized response to Western machines. The list also includes tanks that were captured by the Ukrainian Defense Forces and those abandoned by Russian crews on the battlefield without significant damage. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen was re-elected for a second five-year term. Earlier, she promised to create a real European Defense Union with flagship projects on air and cyber defense over the next five years if she stays in office. Addressing the European Parliament in Strasbourg, she also pledged to support Ukraine for as long as it takes in its fight against Russia's invasion and criticized the Hungarian Prime Minister for visiting Moscow on his so-called peace mission. We must also invest more in our security and defense. Russia is still on the offensive in eastern Ukraine. They are banking on a war of attrition, on making the next winter even harsher than the last. Russia is banking on Europe and the West going soft. And some in Europe are playing along. Two weeks ago, a European Union Prime Minister went to Moscow. This so-called peace mission was nothing but an appeasement mission. European Union foreign ministers are considering penalizing Hungary for its independent and uncoordinated foreign policy activities by boycotting a foreign minister's summit in Budapest, reported Politico. Instead, they plan to organize their own meeting on the same dates, August 28 to 29. This will be in response to Prime Minister Viktor Orban's recent actions, including his uncoordinated visits to Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. Three European diplomats told journalists that the High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Borrell, is expected to call the ministers to a formal Foreign Affairs Council meeting at the same time as Orban's summit. The Czech Republic plans to construct an ammunition plant and establish the production of assault rifles on Ukrainian territory as part of an expanded defense cooperation between the two countries. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmyhal announced these developments during press conference with Czech Prime Minister Petr Fiala. Spain announced a new batch of military aid to Ukraine. It includes 10 Leopard 2A4 battle tanks, several backhoe loaders and anti-tank missiles, reported the country's Ministry of Defense. According to the statement, this military support will arrive in Poland this weekend and will then be delivered onward to the Ukrainian military. Along with this aid, Spain will have handed over a total of 20 such tanks to Ukraine and plans to prepare another batch in the second half of 2024. Greece is planning to decommission 32 of its F-16 Block 30 fighter jets and potentially transfer them to Ukraine. This move comes alongside Greece's plan to modernize its remaining F-16s and acquire new Dassault Rafale fighters from France. Additionally, the U.S. has approved Greece's purchase of advanced F-35 jets. According to Al Jazeera's sources, Greece proposes sending the decommissioned F-16s to the U.S. for upgrades before transferring them to Ukraine. However, concerns exist about the impact on Greece's air defense capabilities, as some officials believe this transfer could create a significant gap. 
Russia is preparing to close its borders this autumn before a new wave of mobilization, reported the British Ministry of Defense. According to UK intelligence, the Russian government is reportedly developing a system to prevent mobilized individuals and potential conscripts from leaving the country. Moscow is implementing an information exchange system between the Defense Ministry and the Federal Security Service. This system aims to provide the border service with detailed information about potential conscripts and prevent their departure from the country. It is expected to be fully operational by autumn 2024. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky and Prime Minister of Slovenia Robert Golub have signed an agreement on cooperation in the sphere of security and long-term support between the two nations. The country has already provided Ukraine with 13 packages of military aid and intends to maintain this level of support throughout the 10-year duration of the document. Ljubljana also commits to meeting Ukraine's urgent needs to strengthen its security capabilities, support Ukraine in training within the EU military advisory mission to Ukraine, and cooperate in seeking sources of funding to support projects in the defense industry. A bilateral security agreement between Ukraine and the Czech Republic was signed by the Ukrainian President and Czech Prime Minister. In particular, the document focuses on enhanced military technical cooperation, primarily involving small and large caliber ammunition, the potential production of firearms and light weapons, as well as UAVs, electronic warfare equipment, and heavy machinery. Czechia will continue to support Ukraine through its initiative to supply 155mm and 122mm artillery shells with the backing of partner countries. Both agreements were signed in the UK. The Ukrainian president arrived on Thursday to participate in the summit of the European political community and attend bilateral meetings. The European Political Community is a forum that was established in 2022 after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It unites 47 European countries and coordinates their responses to shared issues and concerns. The summit was held at Blenheim Palace in Woodstock, the birthplace of Winston Churchill. So our first task here today is to confirm our steadfast support for Ukraine, to unite once again behind those values that we cherish, and to say we will face down aggression on this continent together. Because the threat from Russia reaches right across Europe. We have stopped the Russian advance on Kharkiv, period. Putin has sacrificed tens of thousands of his citizens, but has achieved nothing significant. This was made possible by the bravery of our warriors and the bravery of our partners who have lifted limitations on the use of Western weapons along our border. Did this lead to escalation? No. On the contrary, it blocked Putin's attempt to expand the war. The more effective our air defense is, the more helpless Putin will be. The fewer restrictions we have on the use of effective weapons, the more Russia will Seek peace. Slava Ukraine. That's it for today. We're United 24 Media. Thanks for staying with us and see you next week.